What is going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to use distance fields to basically make sort of a foam in a river. I won't be actually showing how to do the little foam effect I have here. Basically I'll just be showing you how to use the tool to pick up sort of the edge. So when you place like an asset in the actual water, it will pick it up. You know what I mean? You get this uh, form around it. So that's using distance fields. So the first thing you'll need to do, if you've not enabled it already, is go into your project settings, right in distance fields, and click generate mesh distance fields. A lot of people will click um, to enable the compressed mesh distance fields. So you might want to do that as well. When you've done that, it'll ask you to restart. After you restart it, brought it back up, come back in. If I actually show you what material looks like, this was a little bit more complex just because it's got a little bit little bit more going on. But the result will be um so you got all this going on. I have not organized any of it. But the main part we're looking for, just for the actual distance fields part, is right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes to make this magic happen. So first we want to do is make a new material. We've got a new material here. Boom, bring this up, right nearest, distance to nearest surface, there you go. Bring that in, zoom out a little bit. Wild position, plug that into the start. And then we want to divide it. Now these extra nodes I'm adding here is basically going to give us control over the result we're going to get using instances. So one left click, one left click to get a one. Um, if you want any node, by the way, you can click um, right click and then type it in. So if you didn't see me get divide, you can always do that. Or you can drag from somewhere and type it in. Connect that up. Convert to parameter. So right click, convert to parameter. Call it divide. Um, let's set my default to 100. Why not? Clamp that because I want the value to stay between 1 and 0. Attach that to a cheap contrast. Now, cheap contrast is one of my favorite nodes. I know a lot of people won't use this, but I like using it. And all it allows us to do is basically essentially contrast a bit more how sharp we want the foam to be, like the edge pickup to be. Change this um, to whatever name you like. So I convert it to a parameter. So when it's in there, right click, convert to parameter. Again, to get the one constant in, hold one and left click. Um, call this contrast, give it a zero at the start because we'll change that later. And that's it, you're done. You can put this between the lerp. Now I want it to change between two colors. I want it to be foam. I believe it's in the reverse, it's always in the reverse. So foam will be A. I always get the lerps, the order incorrect. So we'll see, we'll see if we've got it right this time. And then plug that into your base color. Click apply. Now it doesn't just have to be in base color, you can do different effects. You can have it so it gets, you can use um, your roughness as well, make it so it's obviously more reflective at your water versus at your foam. So you basically essentially just do a complete copy of this. And in the lap, you'd be like, Foam being the what A we'll have at I don't know point nine for roughness and then like a one value for the water. Wait no, zero value for the water to be reflective. Plug it into the roughness. So basically you'll just repeat the same process for different parts of your material. And that, nothing too fancy, nothing that I haven't explained previously in other videos. Let's actually go foam water so I can change those. To do that I right click to convert it to parameter and named it. We'll apply again. So I've already made the material a little bit more advanced than what I was going to show. I was just going to show base color but that's fine. Reflect slide. Put it on the water. Now the water is reflective, the foam isn't. So obviously this isn't quite what we want but I set up all of these parameters. So to apply those right click Create material instance. Ignore these ones, I made these earlier as a test. Drag that on, make sure you drag it on. If you go into here and you start changing stuff and you haven't actually applied 
the material, <laughs> it won't change anything. So dra make sure to drag that on as whatever you want it on. I've definitely done that before in the past where I didn't realize I didn't drag it on. I'd be like, why ain't it working? So you contrast again, we'll control your sharpness. And you divide, we'll control basically how much effect overall, I guess it has. Make it more of a watercolor, I guess. Uh, ooh. Pop it on there. And yeah, that's pretty much just the basic way of setting up distance fields. You can do more fancy stuff with it to make the water look better, obviously. But that's just the basic starting position for you guys to make it more in depth. One other thing I'd like to show you with this material, um, I've got an example over here. So this object here, if I, so I've applied um, this material to this, right? Now it will be defaulted. So if I write distance fields down here, turn that on. The problem is if the asset itself, what, what this is basically unticking effect distance field light is the assets affecting itself for distance fields. If I come, if you see it here is on the preview, when I start turning down the divide, you'll see sort of this happening. Yeah, basically we don't want that. We don't want it to be affecting itself for distance fields. So if you just come into your, click your asset itself, go to your search down here, make sure in detail, this, oops. Distance field, effect distance field lighting. No, we don't want the asset itself to affect any distance field lighting. Now, when I go to pop this into assets and we actually turn up the divide, yeah, up the divide, you'll get the effect you're looking for. And yeah, that's basically how you set up some distance fields. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped some people who didn't know how to do it at all to begin with. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.